Hello, Cody. Hello, Brendan. How are you doing today? I'm good. I see we're playing some uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Tom Clancy's. Yes, we are. In some order of those words. <laughs> I believe it's Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yes, that is that's the title. a mouthful. That is a long name. And so this is based on the Ghost Recon universe, which has nice had a few games on previous the consoles, and this is the first game on the next ship. gen, or whatever they consider this generation of consoles, correct? Yes. I, I believe it's the current gen now. Who knows? Uh, okay, <laughs> so what do we have going on here? I see you You are your man with a very hipster haircut <laughs> and a eye patch. Yes, well, you get to customize your character, so I decided I would make him the hipsteriest hipster. Yeah, he's pretty hipster. <laughs> I love that uh, side shades with like the slick back hair. Yep, and uh, the eye patch. That's that's what really brings it all yeah, together. Yeah, that beard, that uh, good uh, woodsman beard. <laughs> so what do we have here? What makes this game interesting, and why should we care? Well, it's it's um it's kind of a different take on the Ghost Recon game style. Instead of uh, a more linear type game, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have something more open. Uh, very, very akin to a lot of Ubisoft titles that have yeah. uh, re it has recently a kind come of out. A feel of Assassin's Creed and all those ones. Yeah, um, I previewed this at E3. Yeah, and um, Has it changed any? Yeah, it's okay. definitely it's a little bit uh, it's more refined. Okay. Um, when I reviewed it at E3, I said it was a a mix of Far Cry. And Ghost Recon. Do you just drop a drone? Is that what's going on? Yes. So just this is flying in the air. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Um, the Ghost Recon style is still very much mm -hmm. intact. So uh, survey the field yeah. and take out enemies accordingly. Um, so the previous Ghost Recon games were very strategic. Is this one as strategic, or is it yes. more just, hey, I have a gun, I can run in here? It's not as strategic. Okay. I found, um, but it is still there are elements of strategy. Okay. Um, so, as you can see, I, I kind of surveyed the field. I'm going to go a little bit deeper in. Um, now, the problem I have with the open world aspect of yeah. this is I end up just <laughs> driving right into hordes of enemies without well, realizing Because you don't want to wait around. You want to get there. Well, no, it's not even that. It's just I don't realize that there's going to be so many enemies, mm -hmm. and they notice me, and I don't notice them, and it's just kind of... It just makes for a bad time. That's fair. But uh, you get three types of weapons, so you have your... Like a saltier, yeah. Secondary, and then a uh, like a handgun. Okay. Um, I'm switching to my secondary one just because I have a silencer on it. Oh, that makes um, sense. So, do you customize these guns, or is that just what they had? Uh, one has like like weird stars and. Like that's actually what it came like. Weird. Yeah. yeah. So that right there is uh, we'll like a supply drop. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I left a marker in there so that uh, the rebels can find them later. Oh. So you're helping the rebels, and you are kind of coming in as a secretive force yeah, so to take down a drug cartel? <laughs> a drug cartel government-ish thing. That sounds like not an act of war at all. <laughs> yeah, it. Uh, this if they get caught, that's totally... Yeah, it doesn't sound that, good at that's all. That's totally an international conflict. But, you know... No, no, it's fine. America, freedom. Is this America on that? No. Oh. But that's what this would be. So... What do we have here? Like, this is a um, full price six dollar title. Yes. It's a single player and multiplayer game. Yes. So okay. I'm playing the single player right now, which I believe is the same as the multiplayer, mm -hmm. uh, just with uh, computers instead of um, actual people who are allies. Um, I don't know. It's a it's a pretty fun little experience. Um, little i that's I not the right term for this no, it's a huge I, I game, this game massive. it's very big and um I, it wasn't me that reviewed it our editor brendan quinn did right and uh, he really liked it too um it, it took a while for me to warm up to it uh, if you recall my preview for it wasn't um very nice you weren't that nice. <laughs> You thought it had some bugs in it, and you thought it was a little bit generic. Yeah, that was my big issue. And uh, it still is generic, And um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it does have elements of Metal Gear Solid and, yeah. and Far Cry. This feels very Far Cry meets Ghost Recon meets... Um like Watch Dogs, maybe it has kind of that Watch Dogs. A little bit of it. Watch Dogs. I guess that's just because they use. Do they use the Anvil engine for this? What do they use for this? I believe I saw Anvil. I could okay. be wrong, but I believe so I saw. Which would be the same engine they use for Assassin's Creed and Watch yeah. Dogs, and 
I want to say. Ooh, watch this. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, you climbed on things. I was trying to get over to that small hump, and he just freaked out and just decided to <laughs> climb the, the side. And this is where I screwed up. I went into the building, and yep. the guy saw me, and now everyone knows that we're here. So, oh, you are the worst. You are the worst counterterrorism <laughs> operative with an eye. I feel it'd be a very hard thing to be a sniper with an eye patch. Yeah, I don't understand why that's even an option. That doesn't seem like a good idea. <laughs> I, I feel that would be bad for... Especially flying helicopters, as you were doing earlier. Yeah, you'd have no depth yeah, perception. That seems bad idea. But, I mean... Just gonna nail it. There you go. Um, so there are different ways you can take enemies out, and I was trying to do it just then. If you kind of hold your scope mm -hmm. over a target and yep. you press X, a hold X, yep. um, there your partner will take them out. Oh, nice. I don't know why it didn't work. Um, it, it just wasn't working. Yeah, okay. Maybe he didn't have a good clear line. So. It could have been that. It could have been maybe that's not something that happens in the middle of a battle. But, um, yeah, it, it's the battles can get very hectic, and that's that's kind of fun. I mean, it has a good look to it. I like the uh, aesthetic of the game. Yeah. It feels very Ubisoft, but it also feels very clean. Ubisoft has kind of turned into a studio with a very distinct yeah, feeling of games. Yeah, all the games kind of the same. Like, this kind of looks like The Division, looks kind of like Assassin's Creed, looks yeah. like Watch Dogs. If this was all part of a shared universe, I would not be surprised. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I still haven't yeah, decided if that's a good thing or not. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's good. It, it's not a bad thing. It's just, it means that you have a uh, publisher that you can identify with the titles. Uh, EA games, kind of the same thing. Yeah. The Frostbite games all look kind of the same. Um, that being said, it's all based on how the gameplay is. I mean, a game can look one way, but if the gameplay's amazing, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, exactly. Like, um... Watch Dogs was one of the best games of last year, so the fact that that was built on a very similar engine as the Assassin's Creed engine didn't make it any worse or any better. It just was kind of a way they could build that game in the way they wanted to. It actually it does say, I think it actually does say America in that box. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, so that's a little, I, I was just showing off a little bit of a loadout yeah, screen. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of customization there. So if for people that like the Ghost Recon game, you're going to find lots of things here? Yes. Okay. I, I think most people who enjoy Ghost Recon will enjoy this because right, this right. seems like the natural progression for the series. Like, yeah, what yeah. else can they do mm -hmm. uh, aside from open world? Right. I'm interested to see what will happen once that whole, cartel, once this kind of, let's get on it. I don't want to say it's a phase. Yeah. Um, but... I kind of want to go back to linear games a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I love an open world game, but when you have the backlog of games I do yes. that is now in the close to 30 games I have to play, open world games are like, no, nah, I'm just not going to do that right now. It's going to be over here, and uh, maybe I'll deal with this later. It's interesting to see what will happen, though, yeah. when because um, generally video games kind of have an ebb and flow where... Uh, the style and uh, direction yeah. kind of change. So, like, we started off last generation, not started off, but last generation turned into the shooter generation. Yeah, yeah. Which then, by the tail end, turned into what we have now, where the it's open world, open world and bright and colorful. Game. Well, I wouldn't call this colorful, but it's, it's it's brighter than it has been. There's a lot less brown and yeah, gray. Yeah, you're saying this in a desert with brown buildings around you. But I'm yes. saying this in a rainy part of the game <laughs> when it's... Uh, when it's bright and sunny, it's very okay. colorful. Um, but, I mean, for the time being, I think when you have that set price yeah. of $79.99 Canada, $60 you, yeah, in America. Yeah, sure you get your uh, bank for your buck thing. Exactly. Three-hour experience, if you're feeling less inclined to purchase it, think about a 90-plus hour game. Yeah. I wonder how much um, something like The Order affected that line of thinking. I don't know. I mean, I like The Order. But that game dropped to about thirty dollars within the first like month. Yeah. So this part here is a uh, this is obviously driving section. Yeah. Now, I found the controls for this to be a little bit it's frustrating. Raining. It's not. No, this isn't just because it's raining. This is a. Um, just how the controls work. Yeah, it's, it's very slippery. So here, I was on my way to a mission, and a random event popped up. And I decided, why not? So there's a man inside who has information. And I'm going to go and infiltrate and and get some get, get, get some information off him by interrogating. Okay, that's, that makes sense, yeah. So it's kind of cool that you can do that. And that's 
I mean, it's not groundbreaking by any means. It's no. something that happens in every I think Assassin's Creed game. has that like, every <laughs> few feet you walk. But, you know, it's still it's a thing that you expect from this sort of experience. If you yeah. have an experience where you basically just go from point A to point B and the rest is just filler, it feels less fulfilling. And you feels get Mafia less, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but it, there's something kind of more fun about this because yeah. you have your little pit stop that you go to and then you survey it, scope it out, mm-hmm. and you're like, okay... How many people are in here? How can I attack this? What's the right. best option? Um, and it's normally just if if you're if you're playing on a normal mode, you can probably just Leroy Jenkins it. But oh, yeah. um, it's not the worst. Uh, it's it's a it's a pretty fun experience. Uh, cool little thing there. Those little bars on the bottom. Yep. Uh, beside the battery, that's how far I can go away from oh, your range. my man. Yeah. So if I go a little too far, it'll start to kind of go fuzzy oh okay and also the drone has a battery life so you have to be kind of careful because you don't want that falling from the sky in the middle of a bunch of uh bad guys yeah okay do you have unlimited drones like if you lose one you just get another one i didn't find i I mean i only played for about like an hour i used it quite a bit Mm -hmm. and didn't find that there were any missing after so i'm not sure if that's they just have unlimited drones or i just haven't lost all of mine yet now how does the game run do you find it actually is utilizing the system to its fullest does it look you played it back. It's, it's right now we're watching footage if anyone was unsure. Uh, do you find it plays smoothly? Yeah, so uh, it's looking like there's a little bit of chug in there. Okay. I don't think that is necessarily the game as much as it is our capture device. Um, so, I mean, there are, I guess, looking at it now, the kind of motions for, yeah. like, the animations on, mm. like, the plant life could be better. But that's just, that's what happens when you play an open world game. Yeah, yeah. there's always going to be some sacrifices to make it the length it is. Exactly. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up here, so let's get to the end of this section where you, like, you're like uh, interrogating sure. the guy. Yeah. I think that's a good place to kind of cap off on. For sure. Uh, so we'll we'll show you the, the little interrogation process and then... I think that's a good way to end. Uh, it gives people kind of an idea of what this game has to offer and gives a, an idea of why you'd want to play it. Yeah, exactly. And I should mention that this is actually not even part of the mission, I was going to secure a radio tower uh, so that a broadcast could uh, be sent out. Huh. So you just walked past the enemy there and he didn't even seem to notice. Uh, no, I don't think that was an enemy. I think that was a civilian. Oh, just uh, chilling out near this compound? Well, yeah, because part of the game is that like the like the people are just used to this, right? right. Like they're just workers on the on this massive plantation. Thing. Exactly. Uh, uh, so here's moment. here's a little guy. I'm like, I want to know where supply raids are, and then he's going to tell me because he doesn't get paid enough for this. Cabron. Wow. So where does this take place? Like what country? I can't remember the exact the exact country, but it's somewhere in South America. With the the guy, the big boss that has like completely covered in tattoos. Oh yeah, he looks like an anime character almost. <laughs> he's got a huge cross tattooed on his face. Yeah, well you know he's hardcore that way. Yeah, exactly. So I guess we'll wrap up there. Um, final thoughts, Cody. Uh, it gets a solid thumbs up from me. I like does it. Does that score matter? Like, does that score no, matter? I mean the the score that actually matters is the one that Brendan Quinn gave it, and that is an eight out of ten. Okay. Uh, you can check that out on CGMegaOnline.com, along with a bunch of other stuff that we have there. You're stealing this car now. The Zeus. Yeah. Okay. And for more content like this, don't forget to check out CGMegaOnline.com. You can follow us on Facebook at facebookcom magazine. You can find us on YouTube at CGMegaOnline, and you can follow us on Twitter at CGMegaOnline. I'm on Twitter at Cody underscore Orm. I'm B Fry Twenty Six. You want to follow me? And we will see you next time. Bye.